Hello, my friends. My name is Dave Swirsky, nephew of Bob Swirsky of Bill Swirsky Super Fans on SNL, and welcome back to On the Grass. And before we get going too far, go ahead and drop a dub verse in the comments below if you're fired up about being one of the undefeated teams in the NFL so far. <laughs> dub verse. And please do like and subscribe so I can keep on growing the super fandom here with all of you on the YouTubes. Now, we have got a whole lot of football to talk about today as we approach the second weekend of the NFL slate of games for the 2024 season. But first, a few housekeeping items for you and a little personal aside before we get going into week two. Please follow along everywhere at Dave Swirsky so you can make sure to get your super fan content on your favorite platform. And I do want to take a quick second to thank everybody lately who has been sharing, commenting, liking, and just in general supporting my parody songs and my skits. It truly is the reason I keep making stuff, so I really do appreciate the kind words and the spreading of my videos around to you and yours. It does truly mean a lot to me. Now on that topic, next week. It just so happens that this super fan is actually going to be getting married to the love of my life the day after the Texans game. So I'm going to ask y'all for some patience with the reaction parody song that will come out after we surely destroy the Texans in Houston. It just may take me a little bit longer to get her done. Hope you'll forgive me. Once in a lifetime experience. <laughs> Marriage. And I shall try to get back on track with another episode of On to Grass later in the week. But just bear with me. Burst. As I try to accomplish the milestone in my personal life and then get back to the super fanning for y'all. All right, let's get into it. Yeah, just what we see on the grass. When feet touch the grass, it's gonna be business as usual. Up first today, let's revel in old Dave Swirsky's picks from last week, shall we? <laughs> this super fan, this one right here, went 14 and two last week in my game picks. Whoa. Oh, did I? Oh, I didn't even know. <laughs> So obviously last week, if you bet with the Swirsky, you won some big bucks. Let's go! <laughs> the only two games I missed last week were the Bengals losing to the Pets and the Steelers tapping the Falcons. Every other game I got right. <laughs> the Bears. Bear down, Chicago Bears. My picks here were accurate and so spot on. <laughs> Next, let's follow up with the storylines from last week that led into the action from week one. Our cheese-headed opponents, who admittedly have had our number for most of my lifetime, get some real bad news, followed by some better, but still bad news. Is their newly super highly paid quarterback of the present and the future, Jordan Love, was injured in Friday night's game in Brazil. What was worried to be a serious injury now looks a little less severe, but still will sideline Love for a few weeks most likely. And while I do love the taste of some Green Bay Tears, the sweet, sweet Green Bay Tears, this is not the flavor of them that I would choose to enjoy or consume. I hate to see players get hurt, period, end of story. At the end of the day, all these guys are human beings no matter what colors they're wearing. Granted, some of them are very well compensated human beings wearing different colors, but human beings nonetheless. And it sucks to see people get hurt in this game. It's even harder to watch players who are leaders of their team go down like this, so let me just say, respectfully, I hope Jordan is okay and comes back soon, cause we wanna beat you at your best. No excuses. And the opening game of the season ended in a toe on the chalk on the grass. See what I did there? And the Chiefs hung on the win. They look pretty legit. Legit, and Xavier Worthy is faster than Grease Lightning out there. Sheesh. Now, Dak did get paid in Dallas. Highest paid NFL player in history. Congrats to you, Dak. He did follow that up with a big time win for Dallas in week one. As far as when Justin Fields would start, it turns out the answer to my question last week was right now. Like, Week one, not only did he start, but the Steelers pulled out the win. So congrats to Justin. I hope they keep starting you for our draft compensation purposes. Also, I just personally think Justin deserves this shot there. So I'm happy to see him taking advantage of it. Moving on, Jamar Chase did not get his payday, but he did suit up and play, but it was not enough for the Bengals to pull out the win. Brock Purdy does look still as efficient as ever. And it appears even without Christian McCaffrey, they're still one hell of a football team and will be a tough out for any opponent all year long. Josh Allen appears to still be Josh Allen -ing with the Bills, and they won. Still not sure who will be the top receiver there, but they look pretty good in their win too. Week one is always kind of a crap shoot as most teams are still shaking off the rust of the preseason and the time off from the real games. Which brings us to... Ah, Bears. 
So let's talk a little bit about our beloved team and their eked out victory against the Tennessee Titans in Soldier Field on Sunday. The first few drives had me celebrating when our defense was on the field as they looked tough. But then the Titans started gashing us with Pollard and Levis started to kind of pick us apart as we would head into halftime down 17 to nothing. And here is where I will kindly remind you, my friends, of what one super fan said last week in a certain game prediction. My prediction is as follows. The Bears defense will dominate a bloated and mayo weighed down Levis with three interceptions, two of which will be pick sixes. The offense will start slow and then score 73 points in just a second half alone, which makes the final tally of this game Bears 80 Titans 3. Now, no one can say one way or the other if Will's tummy was feeling the effects of the morning mayo consumption in his coffee, or perhaps he was lightheaded from the stench of that cologne. Yuck. But the second half, the tides did turn, my friends. In a throwback to the 2025-26 season, our Bears special teams unit and defense took over that game in the second half and led us to a victory. <laughs> Bear swing. The emotional roller coaster that we all experienced is a ride that I would perhaps not like to take ever again. But the joy of watching Tyreek Stevenson take in that pick six and then a two point conversion after from Caleb to Swift cured all the bad feelings that I had from the first half. Once again, like some old silly super fan said last week, and historically, when our defense takes the ball away and plays tough, our beloved team fares very, very well. The last Super Bowl appearance for the Bears in 2006, the defense was top three in points allowed that season. Just saying, when the wind starts a whipping and the snow starts a flying, and that Bears defense is making it difficult for people, that's when we've been successful in the past. Just saying. <laughs> I must be a football genius, I don't even know. Historically, when we have been good, we have a killer defense. And while the beginning they did have their struggles, I have to believe that them having all come together with a gut check after only two quarters of the 2024 season played and coming out on the other side victorious will serve them well in the season as it wears on. The Bears. And I just want to point something out very quickly. Now I know Caleb and the offense didn't have a stellar game, but you know what they didn't do? Turn the football over. I'm not talking about Bayless and the special teams blunder. Uh, yikes. I had high hopes. RIP crash the ferret. I'm talking about the offense and Caleb. Now, did he take a few bad sex? Yes, he's a rookie. Did he miss on a few throws? Sure. Did he make some great throws too? You bet he did. And did he make some costly mistakes that would have surely cost us the game with the way it went? No. He did not. I'm taking that as a win for him and the team and something to build from. Things didn't technically go his way, but he didn't do anything to lose the game for us either. And after all those heartbreaks, especially from last year where we would fall apart in the fourth quarter, to watch us come back from behind was pretty freaking awesome. <laughs> Bears. And specifically that one run where we needed a first down and he juked out a defender to make sure he got it and didn't go out of bounds first. I don't know, there's just something to build on there for sure. And the locker room seems more united than I've seen him in a long while, at least from the outside looking in. So like I said in my parody song. 16 to go, now this game's your floor. Offense, you must turn this around, it's not preseason anymore. The offense has to match the intensity and efficiency of the defense. And I think it will be a work in progress, but they will indeed make progress as the year stretches on. As mentioned before, Sunday Night Football this weekend will feature our Bears and the Texans down in Houston. So make sure to come back here on Friday for my game preview and prediction for that one. So now that we've covered the Bears, let's get to the predictions for the upcoming slate of games in week two. First up will be a Thursday Night Football matchup between the Bills and the Dolphins. This one is tricky, but but uh, I've got Miami winning this one. I'll take the Niners over the Vikings, eh, Seahawks over the Pats, Commanders stopping the Giants, Chargers beating the Panthers, because yikes, Carolina. I asked you to lose for us last year, but I didn't think that you'd continue to be this bad this year. Please, Carolina. Bye. have high high hopes cowboys in a high scoring close game over the saints colts over the jordan loveless packers jags over the browns titans top the jets and greeny panics on get up buccaneers beat the lions ravens roast the raiders rams beat the cardinals 
Chiefs take care of the Bengals at home. Broncos beat the Steelers in an ugly, low-scoring affair. And last but not least, the Eagles whoop up on the Falcons to close out the week on Monday Night Football. 14 and 2 after week 1. So let's see if my pick stay is dead on in week 2. And that, my friends, is going to do it for this episode of On the Grass. Thank you again for joining me. Thank you for your comments and support and for just being you. Keep on sharing my parodies with your loved ones and friends. It means a lot to me. Check back in on Fridays for my Bears game previews and predictions. And enjoy this week of being 1 and 0 to start the year, my friends. Oh. And the merch is on the way sooner than later. Working on a couple t-shirts and a couple hoodies for you all, so stay tuned. Bye for now, and go Bears! The Bears play this Sunday. Week two is on the way.